Hi everybody and welcome back to A Dinosaur in the Library. I'm sorry I've been sort of out of the loop of the last week. My mother-in-law was visiting so I haven't been making any videos. Um, I did upload the one, the name, No Name Calling Week uh, video this week and I hope you all took part in that. I hope, even if it wasn't anything blatant, I hope you spent the week celebrating kindness and at the very least I hope it made you mindful of that sort of issue and hopefully you know, gave you an idea for maybe to participate next year. Um, I know I uploaded the video about the readathon that was Saturday. Unfortunately, we were driving my mother-in-law home yesterday, and I drove up. Um, we did it all in one trip, and it's a six-hour one-way drive. So I did the first, I did the six hours. We stayed there for a couple hours um, to stretch and relax and rest a minute, and then we turned around, and my wife drove the entire six hours back. Well, the time that I would have been reading was when I was driving, um, except for the last hour, and I suffer from serious motion sickness, so I cannot read in the car, but my wife, however, did read almost the entire, I think actually the entire four hours of the readathon, so we're going to go ahead and count that since I was completely unable to do it myself, um, but I hope you all took part, and I hope, and I know there were a bunch of libraries that took part, and bookstores and things like that, and I hope everybody had a ton of fun. So um, without further ado, I will jump into this video. I am doing my January book haul, and yes, I know I'm not crazy. I do know there's an entire other week in this month, but I went a little bit crazy buying books the first part of this month. Um, when I get my financial aid, I usually kind of let myself go a little crazy with book buying because I know I'm not going to be able to buy a whole lot the rest of the semester. A, because I don't have a whole lot of extra money to do it, but B, because I know I'm not going to have the time, so I don't really purchase them. But if I have a stack of books that I really want to read sitting there, when I do have a break, I don't have to go out hunting anything. I can just snatch one and you know, read it. So I went a little crazier than normal, but not all of these were purchased. Some of them were free, and a pretty good number of them were free, actually. And some of them were my wife's, and then... Some of them were gotten with credit, uh, or gotten at thrift stores, and when we got on book credit. So it's not as bad as it will seem. So but I'm going to jump in because this is probably going to be an incredibly long video. So the first ones I got for completely free, essentially, because I traded books into Powell's.com. And you can either get cash or credit, and you always get more credit than cash when you do things like that. And of course, I'm going to get more credit. So I got about $70 in credit. And, of course, shipping cuts into that, and one of them was a hardback, brand new. Um, they didn't have a used copy of it, so it ate up my $70 pretty quick. I have four books. Two of them were for fun, and two of them were, they looked really interesting, so I'd have read them anyway. But I'm using them for dissertation research and other research that I'm doing in the course of my PhD stuff. So the first one is Pray the Gay Away. The Extraordinary Lives of Bible Belt Gays by Bernadette Barton. It's a lot of bees. And this is just a really pretty cover, first of all. The rainbow is foiled. It's on the front and the back. And I just thought it was a beautiful cover. I thought I was getting a paperback, but then I realized they didn't have a paperback. I don't think that the, yeah, the, the hardcover itself isn't decorated. But um, it's just a really excellent study of what it's like to be gay in the Bible Belt. And if you're not familiar with the U.S., the Bible Belt is the swath of states in the Deep South that are um, typically extremely religious and fundamentalist in nature. So these are areas like my home state of Alabama, um, Georgia, Mississippi, Louisiana, Tennessee, the Carolinas, North and South, um, Texas for sure. Um, sometimes things like Kansas, Kentucky, Virginia, they're all included. Um, of course, we're making great strides there, but it is still extremely difficult to live in this area and be gay openly. So, um, and this, I've already cited this in one paper, and it is brilliant. And that was only the first couple of chapters. So I'm really looking forward to getting into this one. The second one is also for dissertation research, but it looks really fun. Uh, well, Fun to my geeky little mind. Out in the Country, Youth Media and Queer Visibility in Rural America by Mary L. Gray. This is another book about being gay in rural areas, specifically. Um, I think she bases this mainly in Kentucky, so it is the rural south. And if you watched my first video or two, you realize that that is one of my primary interests, is LGBTQ youth in the American rural south. So that one is going to be really interesting to read as well. The other two were just purely for fun. This one was recommended to me on Goodreads by a follower, and it was because I had um, reviewed The Man Who Loved Morlocks by David 
J. Lake. And I think I talked about this book um, before um, in another video. It's a sequel to The Time Machine. It was written in 1981. It is proving almost impossible for me to find a copy of this to buy. I did get a copy through Interlibrary Loan at my university and read it. Uh, it was a really quick, you know, one day read and I loved it. So I'm searching diligently for it. The only ones I can find right now are super, super expensive. And this is after contacting the publisher who unfortunately has no idea either. So yeah. Anyway, it was a really good book. And it was this book, uh, The Time Ships by Stephen Baxter, was recommended to me by someone on Goodreads whose name I cannot remember. And I'm very sorry for that. Uh, but it's a book about a war between the Eloy and the Morlocks in the far future. And if the name sounds familiar, he is the co-author of the Long Earth series with Terry Pratchett. And he is known for hard sci-fi, which I'm typically not as interested in as just regular sci-fi. But this sounds really awesome. So maybe he'll convert me. And the last one I got from Powell's was one I've been really, really, really wanting to read, and that is the first book in The Parasol Protectorate by Gail Carriger, and that's Soulless. And I love the little octopus that's the uh, Parasol Protectorate series marking. I love the little octopus, but I haven't read this yet. I am dying to read it. It sounds so much fun, and I got it for free. Okay, so now I'm going to do the other books I got for free. Um, we had about 60 or $70 in credit at our local used bookstore from trading and stuff, which I also talked about in another video when I pulled all that stuff off the bookshelf. And I should have done an unhaul at that point, but I'm not as familiar with BookTube as some others, so I did not realize that that's what an unhaul was because I haven't seen any unhaul videos. So next time I do that, I will be sure to film it. Um, some of these are my wife's, so I don't know a lot about them. I'll just kind of mention the name and the title. Uh, the author in the title, and yeah. So the first one I'll probably read as well. It's hers. It's Johnny Cash, The Autobiography by Johnny Cash with Patrick Carr. And yeah, it just sounds really interesting. We're both interested in country music, um, especially older country music. So this looks like it's going to be fun. Uh, this is another one of hers. Tammy Hogue's The Ninth Girl. She's read a lot of Tammy Hogue. Um, likes that sort of mystery thriller. Um, the Hot Zone, A Terrifying True Story by Richard Preston which is an older book, but neither of us have read this. I will probably read this um, because it just sounds really interesting. It's about an infectious disease, so I'm kind of interested in things like that. Another one of hers I'm not really sure what it's about is The Troop by Nick Cutter. Uh, and this is another one of hers, Tom Racina's Deep Freeze. It looks like there's a blizzard in Hollywood, some sort of disaster novel. And I think the rest of these are mine from that bookstore. Um, so I love Amy Tan. I've read pretty much everything she's ever written. I have missed the latest. And you, you're hearing the plastic bag rattle. And I'm really sorry that all of these were kind of stacked up to the side until I could get around to reorganizing things. Um, except for the last couple of books that she wrote. And while we were in the used bookstore that day with my wife's mother, I realized... I realized that they had a pretty good bit of them, and I decided to pick them up. So I got Amy Tan's The Bone Setter's Daughter, which I've read before and loved. I also got Amy Tan's The Valley of Amazement, which I have not read, and I'm looking quite forward to reading. I got a copy of The Hundred Secret Senses. Again, I've read this. I absolutely loved it. The Kitchen God's Wife. Again, another one that I loved. Saving Fish from Drowning, which I have not read and eventually will get to. The last one I got is a copy of her, um, it's a memoir type book. It's The Opposite of Fate, Memories of a Writing Life, and it's nonfiction. But this one is signed. And yes, I know it's not signed to me. It's too can't read the name, Joy and Luck, Amy Tan. I will probably never get to meet Amy Tan in my life to get her to sign my books, so this was quite a find for me. I was very excited, and it wasn't super expensive. They didn't jack the price up. It was just, um, they usually do half price on their paperbacks, and then they give, they just assign a price to their hardbacks, so this book was $7.50 with my credit, and it's signed. And I got one other book there that just looked really interesting. I hadn't heard anything about it. I've never heard of it, 
The cover is gorgeous. Um, it's The Death of Vishnu by Manal Suri. And you can sort of see the cover. It's sort of foiled, and then the, the, yeah, the spine is just gorgeous. The, um, they had a paperback of it, but the spine was different, and I really love this portrait of Vishnu on the, on the corner here. And it's just, the end paper's beautiful. Even the front, even, even the actual cover, it's just this gorgeous mustardy color. And this button has this foil on it, and it's just beautiful. But that's not the only reason I bought it. It does sound really, really interesting. Um, if you've read it before, let me know what you thought. I have heard nothing of this. It just was one of those I grabbed on impulse. That's all the ones we got at the used bookstore. Next ones I got because my mother-in-law loves thrift stores, and they don't have a lot where she's from. So we took her to like a couple of Goodwills, I think. I don't know, um, several. And, of course, while we were there, I picked up <laughs> several books. Um, not as many as you would think, though, because I didn't find as much this time. Um, sometimes I find a lot, sometimes I find nothing. It's crapshoot. So this is one of my wife's, Devil's Right Hand by Lilith St. Crow. And it's, it's a book in a series um, called the, I think, the Dante Valentine series. So I don't think she's read these before, but it looked fun. This one, uh, Triangle by Catherine Weber, is a historical fiction about um, a woman named Esther Gottsfield, who was the last survivor of the 1911 Triangle Shirtwaist Fire. And it just sounded really, really good. My wife found this for me, and I was very excited. This one, uh, it's a nonfiction book. It's the story of the great influenza pandemic of 1918 and the search for the virus that caused it by Gina Collada. And if you'll notice, occasionally I'll put these in here. I am a super geek for micro histories and this sounded really awesome. This is also a good will find. This is a brand new copy. The spine is not broken. The pages aren't messed up and I've been wanting to read this. It's The Lost City of Z, A Tale of Deadly Obsession in the Amazon by David Gran. Yeah, Gran. And it's it's a really pretty book on top of that. It's just, and it's really, really good condition. And I think I got it for $3. This one I was very excited. It's a Haruki Murakami book. And I have another one that I picked up and some that I bought. And I've been really wanting to read some of his. And this one's After Dark. I don't know anything about it. I just know that I really, really want to read some of his work and this was cheap. I also got this one on recommendation from several YouTube or booktube videos. It's How to Be a Woman by Caitlin Moran and it's apparently just a really great feminist uh, memoir type book and it looks really fun and it's apparently hilarious um, and again it was like three dollars. This one I was very excited to find because I used to have a copy of this in paperback, but I really don't know what happened to it. Um, and it's Prison Writings, My Life in My Life is My Sundance by Leonard Peltier, United States Prisoner Number 89637-132, edited by Harvey Arden. Um, again, this was only $3. It's a beautiful cover on top of that. And if you don't know who Leonard Peltier is, he is a Native American political prisoner, and he went to jail for supposedly... Um, killing an FBI agent in the late seven or in the seventies, I think, um, in the midst of the AIM issues and things like um, the retaking of Wounded Knee, and it had long been believed that he was framed for this, and multiple organizations, including Amnesty International, have called for his release, and he is still in prison. So this is going to be an awesome read. If you haven't read anything about him, you should definitely go look him up. There's tons of information. He has a legal defense fund. There's a Facebook group um, and a website, and there's a lot been written, written about him, so you should definitely go look it up. Okay, so what now? Oh, uh, oh, one more. And this, I know this is the third in a series, but um, I love this series, and I haven't owned um, this one. And while this is the third book in the Looking Glass War series by Frank Vetter, and this one's Arch Enemy. And I actually don't think I've read the third one. I've read the first two, and I've read all the Hatter M novels. So I'm very excited to check this out and reread the series. 
especially since the fifth Hatter M graphic novel is coming out this year, and then a sequel, well, prequel to The Looking Glass Wars that focuses on Hatter M and his um, life before the events of The Looking Glass Wars. So I'm really, really excited to read those, and I'm going to have to reread the entire series to remember what's going on because it's been a while. <clears throat> Um, this is one that I just picked up at Target because, hello, I need this in my life. I've already read The Scorch Trials. I liked it. Um, I'm really excited to see what happens in the next one. So um, I've got this one and The Kill Order. Oh, no. I think I bought them out of order. That's not good. I'll have to look it up. Anyway, I bought this one because I want to read the entire series. Hopefully... This is not the fourth. Hopefully this is the third. Anyway, I know you YouTubers know about this, so I will not go into it too deeply, but I'm just excited to read it. <laughs> then I went to Barnes & Noble one day looking for something specific. Ended up coming out without it because they did not have it. However, I did come out with three others. <laughs> um, this one is the Mammoth Book of Sci-Fi Stories by Women, including a story by Catherine M. Valente, who wrote... The Fairyland series, which I have gone on about ad nauseum, also has people like Elizabeth Fair, Lucy Sussex, Benjamin Shri Duong Q, and I'm really sorry if I butchered your name, Angelica Goro Disher, Hao Jung Fang, and just a bunch of really awesome authors. Um, oh, Ursula K. Le Guin is also in here, I think, Nancy Kress. Karen Joy Fowler is edited by Alex Daly McFarland. I went in looking for the Mammoth Book of Alternate Histories, but this one sounded amazing as well. This one was an impulse, <laughs> um, 20 Trillion Leagues Under the Sea by Adam Roberts. It's a retelling of Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which I love Jules Verne. I love 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, the Kraken, um, you know, the octopus and the squid, or the squid in that book is kind of what led me to love octopus so much. And I love the cover, too. So. And it's got the old uh, diving helmet. Oh, you can't really see that on the on the spine, but it's really pretty. This is my wife's. Um, she read it and loved it. It's apparently, there's apparently a Swedish television series um, based on this series. This is a late book in the series, so if you're going to start reading this, I would not start with this one. Um, it is An Event in Autumn by Henning Mankel. It's a Kurt Wallinger mystery. And that's the series of the Kurt Wallander Mysteries. This is not the first book, um, but she really, really enjoyed it to the point that she is going to pick up the rest of this series. Um, she also got another book at the same time, which is not in here, and I don't remember the name of it, but it's by Victoria Laurie. It's a specific it's like a paranormal mystery series that she really enjoyed. She read it yesterday on the drive and really loved it. So <clears throat> if you're interested in that, let me know. I will put the title down below if I remember. Okay. So before I get to the books that I bought, bought at like a, the other at books a million, which are my last ones and probably the ones I'm most, most excited about. Um, there's a store in um, our, where my wife's hometown called Dirt Cheap and they are, they have them in Alabama, Louisiana and Mississippi. And I think they're also called treasure chest and they get, things from other stores that don't sell that may be slightly broken or a lot of times they're fine. They're just, they don't sell them. Um, they get a lot of Christmas stuff after the holidays. Sometimes they get books. So when we went home to visit and pick my mother-in-law up to come down here, we went in there um, looking for some clothes for our nieces and stuff. And I found some books for a quarter a piece. That's right. 25 cents. So, you know, I was leaping on that and I got five. The first is a copy of Ovid. Metamorphoses, um, translated by Rolf Humphreys, and I, it's been multiple years, probably 15 years, 20 years since I read this, but I really did love it the first time I read it, and I would like to reread it, and for a quarter. Um, the second one is a his, um, sorry, Extraordinary Evil, A Brief History of Genocide by Barbara Coloroso. It's a micro history. The cover is really cool. Um, it just sounded really interesting, and for again, for a quarter. How am I going to hate that? Even if it's the worst book I've read, it only cost me a quarter, and I can always trade it in. This is a short story book. Just picked up because it sounded interesting. Men in the Making, stories by Bruce Matchert. Mackart. No clue. Never heard of him. Never heard of this book. But it's short stories, and I do love short stories. 
This one I had heard of. I don't remember a whole lot about it, but it's Memoirs of a Revolutionary Daughter. Uh, something Fierce, Memoirs of a Revolutionary Daughter by Carmen Aguirre. Aguirre, Aguirre. And um, her family fled to Canada after Augusto Pinochet's violent coup in Chile in the 70s and at 73. And this is her life. And I've heard of this, and I think it's already on my TBR on Goodreads. And if it's not, it's about to be. Very excited. And this one is another micro history. It is uh, The Honey Trail in Pursuit of Liquid Gold and Vanishing Bees by Grace Pundick. Pundick, I'm not sure which it is. Uh, it's a gorgeous cover, and I love it. This video is running so long, guys. Um, and then the last set are books from Books A Million. I'll go through these kind of quickly. Um, I got the first two books in the Looking Glass Wars series, which is The Looking Glass Wars and Seeing Red, both by Frank Vetter, to go with that third in the series that I picked up at Goodwill. I got The Year of Reading Dangerously, How 50 Great Books and Two Not-So-Great Ones Saved My Life by Andy Miller. It's about reading. It's about books. And I think this one is already on my TBR as well. This is another one of my wife's. It still has the bargain price sticker on it. Um, Empire, a zombie novel by David Dunwoody. I don't know a whole lot about it. I just know that it's, it's zombies and it's a future dystopia. Well, zombies are involved, so I suppose it would be a dystopian automatically. Uh, I also got myself a copy of The Island of Dr. Moreau. It's H.G. Wells. I love H.G. Wells, and I do not have a copy of this one. I got myself a copy of Don Quixote by uh, Miguel de Cervantes. Uh, this one's translated by Tom Lathrop. It's the Signet Classics edition. I started to get the Word Cloud, gorgeous Word Cloud edition, but I realized I really, it's been since high school, probably since 1997 that I've written since I've read this and I really do love this book so I probably am going to be underlining and marking and things like that and I really wouldn't want to mark up um, one of those word cloud editions and put things in it so I, I got the paper back plus it was cheaper. <clears throat> this was an absolute impulse because I love the title and it's short stories and it's, there once lived a woman who tried to kill her neighbor's baby. Scary fairy tales by Ludmilla. Please forgive me for mispronouncing this. Petrushkevskaya, um, selected and translated by Keith Gesson and Anna Summers. She has several collections, and they all have fabulous names like this. I am so looking forward to checking this out, and I hope they're wonderful. This one, I am excited about. It's a Haruki Murakama, Murakami's The Strange Library. Um, I have heard wonderful things about this. The book is amazingly designed. It had an art director, you know, and you open it like this. And then there's all these awesome illustrations, and it just looks beautiful. Not to mention, it's just supposed to be amazing, an amazing read. So I only have four more guys, five more, sorry. The next one I've been eyeing for quite some time. It's The Gollum and the Ginny by Helene Wecker, and it's fantasy historical set in the 20s in New York City mainly I think. Looks amazing. This one is strictly on recommendation from booktube. The Diviners by Libba Bray. I have never read anything by Libba Bray. A friend of mine read Beauty Queens I think is the name of it and she loved it. Um, I haven't gotten around to read it but this series sounded really interesting. Um, at least the very first one sounded really interesting to me. Um, it's also set in the 20s in New York. So, which I actually kind of like reading things set then. Um, but I also loved this cover, and I'm excited to get to read something that I've heard about on BookTube. Uh, the last one I got at Books a Million is this one, and it sounded so good. It's called The Mathematician's Shiva. And this math this woman is a, an amazing mathematician. Oh, I'm sorry, it's by Stuart Rost Zacker. I'm saying it wrong. Um, she dies having supposedly um, solved one of the most difficult mathematical problems in the world without leaving any sort of sign that she has done so. So all of these mathematicians show up at her shiva, which is supposed to be a very private affair with her son, and they're searching her house for this, and it just sounds amazing. And I picked it up honestly because there was a buy two get one free sale, and I had already picked up the diviners and the golem and the Ginny, and this was on that, that sale, and it looked so good. 
The last two I did pick up at Target. Um, the first one was for a friend of mine's daughter, and that's Rosie Revere Engineer. And it was on clearance for $4. Um, I think that somebody bought it online and returned it to the store, and they didn't sell it in the store. So, yeah, but I bought this for my friend's daughter. I haven't had a chance to give it to her. It's by Andrea Beatty, illustrated by David Roberts. It's awesome. The value of perseverance and being an awesome girl. And the last one I picked up is a sequel to Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. It's The Last American Vampire by Seth Graham Smith. I absolutely loved Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, the book. I have not seen the movie, and this sounded awesome. I'm sure my brother's going to want to read it when I get done with it. And also just found out that he's direct, he's producing the two It movies that are coming out based on the Stephen King book. That was exciting. So I have rambled on for quite some time, guys. And But that was all of my books for the month of January. I will probably not be allow, be allowing myself to buy any more this month just because I will not be able to read these for a while. Um, I do know I have one more book that I need to order, and that is strictly for school, and that is the manga guide to, manga guide to statistics, because statistics is kicking my butt. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'm really sorry I ran this long, and let me know below if you read any of these and what you thought of them, and you can find all of my links below, my Twitter, my Instagram, and my blog, which is never updated hardly. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But I think that's it. Follow me on Goodreads as well. It's down there. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.